I asked her if she, if, if she would like to go to Hawaii with me, and we went to a hotel called the Hale Kalani. And the hotel is, the Hale Kalani means house befitting heaven. And it was exactly that. It was a house befitting heaven. They had a beautiful pool there with an orchid. It had one inch ceramic Italian tiles. They're blue and white. And I fell in love with that pool and just the look of the orchid in the pool is very romantic and you saw the ocean. And I took a photograph of it and then when we got back, asked my pool builder uh, if he could put an orchid in the bottom of my pool. Before I know it, he's talking to everyone, we're getting the, the exact replica. It took them like three weeks to do it, but they drained the pool and they put a whole mosaic of an orchid inside the pool. Voila, we have it. And that orchid is a constant reminder to us. Every day we look out, we see that orchid, and, it, and Mary says it all the time, house befitting heaven. While we were there, I, uh, I felt like I wanted to go on a sailboat ride. One of the um, famous restaurants there, Michelle's, is having a, a cruise and uh, midnight dinner type of thing. So you could go on a cruise and come back for a late dinner. And we went on a sailboat ride. When I got out on the water, because I used to have a boat uh, back in the 80s, and I, I remembered what I felt like when I was on a boat. The first time I owned a boat, I got out on the water and it was a beautiful day. And I said to myself, if I die today, I'm already in heaven. That's the way being on the water on a boat feels to me. Tony was looking for uh, some type of a uh, release and uh, a little bit to lay off some work, you know, do some fun things. And I felt so like he was having to work so much that he wanted to enjoy some things. And so I asked him, so well, what was, you know, what is it that in life that where you had the most fun, um, if, you know, that, that you were able to get some type of reprieve from working all the time? He says, I had a boat. I said, so let's get a boat. And he goes, okay. <laughs> And when we got back, that's, that's, that's what I did. I started to look for a boat to put on Lake Mead. And that graduated into quite a bit more after that. I designed her ring from scratch. I, I, I did all kinds of research and said I wanted to... I bought the stones separate and then I went to the jeweler and uh, and had brought the jeweler like a hundred pictures and said i i like all these different kind of rings what can you make and so we, we you know and the jeweler loved it because i was so involved in the actual i didn't just go and pick out a ring i looked at a bunch of rings i bought the stones first and that because i knew i knew what kind of design i wanted and then i just needed the setting and that jeweler helped me probably had 12 spreadsheets you know <laughs> <laughs> all done up for him, you know, uh, as he does, you know, he does spreadsheets and everything, but it's the most gorgeous ring I've ever seen, so it's really beautiful, see? <laughs> always love you, always love you, got nothing but this whole part of my I decided that I was going to buy a ring, and I went and bought a ring, and, and then asked the person who I purchased the ring from if she would help, uh, give me an idea of how to propose. It was so romantic. I have to tell you, from the bottom of my heart, I never, never dreamed of, you know, having a diamond ring, first of all, or anyone, you know, doing anything as, as, as uh, sentimental and romantic as that. It was just, you know, over the top. Her name was Cindy. She, uh, I invited her to Charlie Palmer's to sit two tables over and uh, with her girlfriend and uh, I said, when we're having a quiet moment, if you could just walk by and um, bend down and pretend like you picked it up. Obviously, we weren't going to lay it on the floor. I don't know, it was probably 20 minutes, half an hour into the evening. Um, somebody walks by, and I didn't notice them at all. But uh, they stooped down, and they picked something up, and um, sort of you know, looking at Tony and me and saying, is this yours? And I looked at it and went, oh my gosh, that looks like an engagement ring. And Mary goes, 
you better take that up to the front desk. Somebody must have lost that. That's not ours. And Tony looks at me and goes, Mary, that looks like an engagement ring. <laughs> so very matter of factly. And I'm like, and I didn't, it wasn't getting it. I'm like, Tony, it's not ours. <laughs> and, uh, and I took it out of Cindy's hand. Then I went, Mary, will you marry me? You know, and he's like, Mary, will you marry me? <laughs> like, I'm like, tonight? <laughs> I said, I, I would like for you to marry me. And she said, yes. So I was taken aback, you know, and he had this whole thing set up. Right after Mary accepted, uh, I hadn't thought of a date. I just, I just thought I would ask her to marry me and then we would figure out when we would get married, when it was the, the best time. And um, she just uh, she just blurted it out. Let's just do it seven seven seven, you know. And it just in the middle of dinner, I said, let's just do it then. It sounded like it would be fun, you know. After the commotion settled, I asked Mary to pull the pin on her watch because if you pull the pin on her watch, it stops the time and the date. And I said, uh, pull the pin on your watch so that you can remember this time and date of when I proposed to you. Our little wedding bears, we got those at Christmas from Anthony and Caitlin. <laughs> As a gift from our children, the two families coming together and uh, the two little bears coming from both sides of our, and which they, it was their idea to come up with, with the two little wedding bears. You know, they were kissing, we were playing with them, so we had a lot of fun with them, it was really cute. The way I see this wedding is not just a wedding day, but a almost a week-long event. You know, when we invited all of our families and asked them to come out. We wanted to bring the, the families together so that everybody could um, celebrate together and get to know each other. And so our we want our wedding to be uh, a special event. The event is um, is more like they did in, in, the, in the old Italian ways is, uh, is uh, when you celebrated a wedding, you celebrated it for like a week. Well, pretty much I'm going to be on a cloud. I'm sure that I'm going to have a lot of, I'm just going to be on a cloud the entire day. Nothing is going to go wrong. Everything's going to be perfect and whatever it will be, will be. And I just know that uh, we're going to have a whole lot of fun with everyone of our family and friends that are coming. And We wanted it to be something that brings everybody together. That's what we're looking forward to. I love you very much. You have been the person that has uh, always been my best supporter and you believed in me. You continue to believe in me. You have brought humor to my life. You brought joy and I'm looking forward to becoming your husband and developing our love for each other, which is, uh, I believe has really developed and matured and become stronger, more solid than, uh, than ever. I think that there's much more to accomplish together. We think the same way, we enjoy the same things, and we project out to the world in the same way. That gives me a tremendous amount of pleasure. I love being with you. I love kissing you. Not only do I have the, the emotional feeling and the physical feeling of your presence, but when we're together, I get a little quiver when I kiss you. And I also feel a tingle when I touch you. And the fact that you look to me for contentment gives me so much pleasure. And I just want to say that I love you very much and I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you. From all of my heart, I make this commitment to you forever. I just want you to know that you are my one and only. You are my soulmate. And you, Tony Musso, you are the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs>